Thank you all. Good morning. Hope you're enjoying Quantum World Congress. Stu, thank you very much for that, uh, that kind introduction. And Rima, welcome. Uh, I'd love to let you uh, start off by talking a little bit about the Office of Technology Transition uh, that is now changing to uh, the Office of Technology Commercialization and, uh, and, and what that means for what you're going to be doing and, and what your team is going to be doing. Uh, and how you're expanding the, the, the office's role within the Department of, uh, of Energy to, to advance early stage technologies. Sure. No, thank you for that. And thank you for having me today. Um, I'm really excited to, um, to be a part of this, 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 this uh, conference. Uh, and also, I wanted to just you know, say that um, you know, our office has been around for about 10 years. But the name change, I think, is to really help us clarify what exactly we're doing and make it very clear that we are in the business of commercialization. We don't want there to be any mistake with respect to that. And, um, and this decision was made by the new administration last spring. And, and I think it's sending a message that you know, we are here to help shepherd along quant you know, technologies, move it into the application space, move it into uh, scaling, move it into um, commercialization. So. Um, and I also wanted to say that you know, we are also playing a significant role in helping to commercialize quantum technologies. And so for those of you that don't know that, you know, please reach out. We're happy to, to, to give you, you know, more background on the work that we're doing. But we're working very closely with industry and the labs and our uh, program offices as well as sister agencies to find ways to move the needle on quantum technologies. And can you tell us a little bit more about what that looks like in terms of public-private partnerships and... Uh, your outreach to industry and and how how does how does how does somebody engage uh, with with your office? So our office does a number of things. You know we, we you know at the DOE and as well as in our office we do provide cash awards. We've we've run we have run prizes in the past. You know we'll we'll see what happens going forward um, with with budgets. But um, and then we also provide private sector folks access to the labs um, and working with entrepreneurs to help them uh, access lab expertise as well as facilities. We have a website called the Lab Partnering Service, which allows industry or you know, anyone out there to look at what technology is being developed at the labs, what is available for licensing, what's been, what, what, where the patents are, what's available. Uh, and so that is open to the public, and we love to uh, have folks reach out and, uh, or reach directly to the labs or to us to, to make those connections. Um, we also work with private sector to help them uh, get familiar with the lab's tremendous trove of, of, of um, um, not just the IP, but also the, the various types of engagements that they're doing. To, uh, you know, they hold conferences and webinars and things like that to really get information out there. Um, and I also wanted to mention that our office recently took over SBIR and STTR for the department. And that's a big deal. In the past, SBIR and STTR um, were sort of fragmented throughout the agency. And, uh, and there is now a stronger emphasis to leverage SBIR and STTR phase one and two and start moving into phase three. DOE previously has not funded phase three uh, projects. Uh, and some of that is probably budget. Uh, and, uh, and, and so this administration is now looking into, OK, how do we change that? How do we ensure that now you know, awardees from phase one, phase two have a phase three option uh, within DOE? And for many people that don't know, if you get an SBIR or STTR at another agency, uh, phase one, two, or, uh, then you are eligible for phase three anywhere within the federal family. Uh, and so we're going to be looking at that as well. Uh, so it's not just our own phase ones and twos. Well, and, and that, that's a great way to, to also get started at the Department of Energy and then maybe move to the Department of Defense, Department of War, and, and, and so forth. Um, the Quantum Industry Coalition was founded in 2017. In 2018, we helped draft and pass the National Quantum Initiative Act. And a, a lot of the focus of that original uh, act and, and, and the, the NQI originally was on basic research and, and setting up centers and things like that. Now, as we're looking to reauthorize the National Quantum Initiative and, and, and moving into phase two of this broader effort, uh, how, do you, how do you see that focus, the focus of the National Quantum Initiative and the DOE's role in it evolving? Yeah. Well, so this is really interesting because, um, you know, in phase one, 
uh, DOE was primarily funded to uh, uh, stand up the quantum information science centers uh, and uh, through the Office of Science, which does basic science research. They've done a phenomenal job, right? I mean, it was a, something that they had to do an overnight. And, uh, and, 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 and they did. They, they, they stood up these centers, uh, and, and that has created a very uh, strong foundation for us to now start looking at phase two, which is building the applications, figuring out the use cases, licensing, and commercialization. We need to get deployment. And there, are, there is some low-hanging fruit, and so we're looking at these things. Um, another really interesting thing that I forgot to mention is that within our office, we also um, just stood up uh, a foundation. It's the Foundation for Energy Security and Innovation. And this foundation is also going to be a partner for us in being able to provide other uh, ways, more flexibility in being able to engage with industry, um, accept money you know, from private entities, that can then, and that, fun, and that money can then be used to help support our commercialization activities. It, like one idea that's been thrown around, or thrown around is, oh, can FESI, uh, that's the acronym, FESI, uh, can FESI, uh, you know, provide funding for more advertising for the companies that we want to support that are going through our um, financial assistance awards, and competitive awards, or going through our um, uh, entrepreneurial programs. Yes, I mean, there's just so much flexibility there, and so we're figuring that out uh, as we speak. And uh, I think a CEO was hired just this past year, um, so that so we're working very closely to sort of give them a map of you know the kinds of things that they think that we think they can work with us on. Well, that sounds like a tremendous capability, and and I know of a number of other foundations that support agencies with 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 very positive results. So looking forward to seeing how that goes. Uh, curious, how does the Department of Energy evaluate the near-term feasibility of quantum applications? How are you deciding uh, what to support and, 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 and what has promise and, and so forth? Okay, um, I'm glad you asked that question. So, you know, at DOE, because we were originally uh, funded to stand up these QIS centers, we've had to be very clever in terms of how we're going to be able to start transitioning into phase two. And we've been very fortunate to have program offices that were willing to work with us and be uh, willing to uh, essentially explore the, and, and, and establish a quantum sandbox, essentially. And we did that through the lab partnering, um, not the lab partnering, I'm sorry. We did that through the grid modernization initiative. And through the grid modernization initiative, Act, uh, we were able to, to get this lab call put together to really seed this quantum sandbox. And it is, um, it, it's been in place now for about two years. And it is, uh, there's a working group that's very vibrant, lots of private sector folks that are involved. It's, uh, it's based in uh, Oak Ridge, but other labs are involved like Los Alamos, Argonne, um, and uh, and I think uh, also uh, NETL. Uh, so we're looking at quantum sensing, quantum computing, as well as quantum communications. We're, we're actually building out this, this test bed, essentially, where we can test out quantum technologies on actual energy infrastructure and be able to get empirical data and actually figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, and there's also a lot of work around algorithm development and whether we could explore uh, NIST computers, and what's interesting in the energy space is that we're very unique in that we um, have the need for heuristics, and in some cases, you know, we have, we have use cases where we think that maybe NIST computers could actually have a role, uh, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, we're, we're able to leverage the energy sector for that, um, and I think the other thing I want to mention is that you know we're out, we are developing these public-private partnerships as well, right? Um, that are working with the labs on other unique capabilities. Um, should I go into that or if you'd like, by all means. So one of those things is uh, this quantum in space uh, MOU that we have, uh, where we're working very closely with uh, our, our friends at NASA as well as DOD to look at what are the near-term use cases. And you'd be surprised how much is already being done. And we're tapping into that. And we're bringing in quantum to help with essentially exploring these use cases in space um, to you know, 
develop the foundation for a space economy that is secured and protected and enhanced by quantum technologies. And, uh, and it's really exciting to see what's already happening and then uh, and looking at the opportunities for space exploration of minerals, to look for, uh, look at manufacturing in space. And we're actually even developing technologies, like uh, components, materials in space that can go into quantum technologies that, uh, that provide us with new capabilities in, that we would not be able to develop on Earth because of gravity. And so we have to harness that. We have to take advantage of that. It's, it's just not, uh, we can't limit ourselves. And so we're very excited to have the kind of partners that we have um, that, that are working on that. Well, thank you for, for talking a bit about that. Certainly space has been an important aspect of, of quantum research and development from the Cold Atom Lab on the, uh, the International Space Station to uh, some of the initiatives that you're talking about. Uh, do you have anything, that, uh, any, any news, any plans that you can share? We're, we're hearing a lot uh, that, uh, about the administration getting ready to, to make some, some moves on this front. Obviously, Director Kratzios had uh, some some indications of, of where the uh, the administration is headed uh, when in his in his address this morning. Uh, is there anything that you're able to share today? Well, I would like to announce that today uh, we uh, expanded our MOU uh, and we have uh, uh, we are now joined with uh, Honeywell and IonQ and EPB uh, Chattanooga, the Electric Board Public Power Board of uh, Chattanooga, I think I said that right, uh, EPB. And uh, they're very much interested in uh, free space communication, satellite to ground. Uh, I mean, this is something the Chinese have already done. So, you know, we're playing catch up, but we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get there. And, and once we put our minds to something, we, we're gonna move really fast. Uh, but it's been, a, you know, we're, we're, we've been building this coalition uh, and for, for, for a while and trying to figure out the sensitivities and make sure that we get things done right uh, so that we can move full steam ahead. And we got the green light from this administration that they are very supportive of this work and that we can continue to bring on partners. Uh, and other partners include Axiom Space, Inflection, Accenture, uh, Boeing, um, Vescent, Crypt. Uh, and Crypt, by the way, is a company that licensed technology from Los Alamos Lab. It's one of our quantum random number generators. And it's going to go to it's probably gonna to go to space at some point. So, you know, we are, we're making headways and another company called Nebula that's actually helping with uh, shielding the, these quantum technologies. Um, DOD wants to put data centers in space. And if that's their plan, we're gonna piggyback off of that and we're gonna do more. And uh, it's gonna to have to be quantum secure. And we're already manufacturing crystals in space that are being utilized in quantum devices. Um, that, uh, crystals that are being used uh, for fiber optics that could actually improve the fidelity of com quantum communications. Um, it, there's folks that are interested in putting in quantum computers. So it may actually help us resolve some of the, the, the need for more error correction. Uh, so th there's novel materials in space that will benefit quantum. And at the same time, space is gonna be benefited by quantum because it'll be secure through quantum technologies. And again, we can use it for resource exploration. And I don't know for those of you who've been following 3i Atlas, but uh, there's some very exotic material that people believe is on this one comet that's right now flying through our solar system. And so, you know, we do need to kind of broaden our horizons here. Uh, and quantum is gonna make that happen. I love it when space and quantum come together. Uh, to close, I'd just like to, to ask you, um, it, it seems as if the Secretary of Energy, the Deputy Secretary of Energy, Energy's leadership in general are very forward leaning on this, as is, of course, the President and, and, uh, uh, and his team. I just would, would ask you if, uh, what, what you've seen from the inside in terms of, of the Department of Energy's commitment here, um, and then finally to close, how, how, should people, uh, how should people reach out directly? Well, our, um, our secretary is very much uh, a, a fan of quantum um, as well as space. So I think he's gonna be excited to know that we've been figuring out ways to bring those two things together. Um, my political leadership in our office, Anthony Puglusi, who meant to be here today, by the way, and, uh, and unfortunately was uh, ill, um, is also very much supportive uh, as well as the deputy secretary. And you know, they've got great relationships with the folks at White House. So uh, you know, the more that you guys come to us and reaffirm that 
we're on the right track, that we're working on things you're interested in working on, uh, and, that, and the more that we can define what the ROI is on this, the better we'll be. We need to show that this is a good investment. This is actually going to improve our, um, our lives, but also bring prosperity. We are focused, uh, as a, this administration is really focused on energy dominance, energy security, but what, the, what does that mean? We wanna reduce scarcity, right, at the end of the day. And as, we, as mentioned in the bio, our goal here is to revitalize Earth, right? Like, and America does need to drive that because it is a race. And if we don't go there first, someone else will. Well, thank you for all of your work. Thank you for being here today. And we're looking forward to working with the, the, the department, the office, the administration to, to get all of this done. Thank you. Thank you.